just to show you a little bit about or go over the internal assessment and the different criteria. I'm going to start off with talking about a little bit about criteria A and what's expected there. And what we'll do is we'll look at the uh, at the template over here um, that I've given you that all you have all you all have access to, as well as this rubric in terms of um, how it's going to be graded. And we're going to do that um, as well by showing you uh, two examples from um, ISK students from past years that both did very well on the IA. Um, so uh, we'll put everything into context. So the first part. Um, is actually, before I start, I'll talk a little bit about this template. What I recommend you do is you first make a copy of this template. So you just say file, make a copy, make a copy of this template, give it your name, um, and, uh, and then uh, you know, you're going to share that with me because that's, that's going to be a running document. Um, here in, in uh, so these are the different sections. Criterion A is what we're going over right now. Um, it's approximately six pages. I, I, I sort of indicate how much each section should approximately be. And again, this is not a, a steadfast rule. It's just... Um, approximation. The next thing you have the different sections of Criterion A. So here we have problem and design opportunity and I tell you here that it should be approximately 2A4 pages and 400 words um, within this section. If I go on I'll see design brief is the next part, 1A4 page, 150 words and so on. In terms of I recommend you leave this, uh, the, the red is kind of a guideline to show you what's expected in these different sections. So I actually, please don't write in the box instead for your content, um, you know just write it, you know, write it over here. And this is what then um, I'll look at, and I would just keep these uh, boxes underneath it just for your own reference um, later on. You can erase them uh, uh, once you turn in your eye. Anyway, okay, moving on. So the first part is the problem and design opportunity. The first part is the problem statement. In this problem statement, it, it consists of four components. The first one is the current situation. And the current situation um, is, uh, you know, the current situation that, uh, that, um, where this problem occurs. So for example, again, the whole idea is you're solving a problem. So the two examples I have here is one of them is Amani's. Um, and what he did, he designed a way for um, seed balls to be disseminated. Seed balls are these, are these little capsules that have a tree seed in them. Um, and the idea is he wants to design a, a solution for distributing them efficiently. Um, so in his case, for his current situation, what he said is his current situation is that there's, uh, you know, uh, deforestation is a big problem in Kenya. He talks about the fact that, you know, how much forest cover has been lost in Kenya. Um, the second example here is, is Varya's, and she talked about her problem is um, in not an easy way to dispense water bottles. So you have these big water bottles, and you have these big bulky dispensers, and she wants an easy way to dispense them, like when you go in camping, for example. Um, so her problem... So her situation is again that uh, you have these water bottles, um, uh, and you know the, the situation is families prefer to bring large water bottles um, intended for dispensers on camping trips. Um, and then her current problem in this case is that they're too bulky and they're hard to fit on a stand uh, on, on the on the quintessential stands, and, and the current stands are also too bulky. In uh, in Amani's case, the current problem in his case, so, so deforestation situation, the current problem is that there's no efficient way to distribute these seed balls. So at the moment, um, you know, you get these seed balls, which is, which is a great way to grow seeds, but the way you do it is just you just throw them out. But if you throw out these seeds, there's no, you know, it's hard to reach specific areas. Also, it's very, it's very expensive because you're going to employ a lot of people to distribute these seeds. So he's looking at how can you distribute more seeds in a more efficient way, in a more cost-effective way. Um, the next thing is the design opportunity. The design opportunity in this case, you would say something like, you know, so because this problem, you now have, you now have the design opportunity, which is to, to come up with a method for distributing these seeds in a more efficient, cost-effective, and sustainable way. And in Varya's case, you would say the design opportunity is to create a product that is lightweight, um, you know, easy to carry in a car. I'm guessing that's what you said. And um, let's see what you said. Let's look at it. Design opportunity. Um, issues and to, to dispense water safely and efficiently. That's her design opportunity. And then what she's what you're expecting is supporting images dem demonstrating the nature of the problem. So if we look at Varya's example, she's got a bulky dispenser and the fact that it's quite heavy. She's got an image of somebody, you know, he heavy to, to, to carry water bottles. In Amani's case, she's got a picture of deforestation of the seed ball and the current inefficient way that they're distributing these seed balls. Okay, so that's the first section. The next section here um, is, a, is a summary of, re, of your research um, and as well as a table and a, um, of research you want to conduct. So before you do any research, it makes sense to sort of summarize what research you plan to conduct. So if we look at Varya's example over here, 
um, of the water dispenser. She has a quick table and she says what she's going to be doing is she's going to research user needs, anthropometric data, ergonomic factors, the structure of the dispenser, bottle properties. Um, and what she's doing is she's, you know, she's justifying why, why this research is needed and then she's indicating whether it's primary or secondary. Um, and that's how she's chosen to do it. Um, and I think that's a quite, a, quite a good way. The thing to remember here is that you know, anything 10 words or less doesn't count towards your word counts in, the, in a table. So in her case, I think all of these must, must be 10 words or less. So this whole thing doesn't actually count into her word counts. It's an efficient way to sort of tell the IB, tell, myself, tell uh, the teacher what you're going to be working on um, uh, or what you're going to be researching without actually um, you know, including this in your word count. Um, okay, the next th the next part over here is also, you know, the key findings should be provided, so key findings of your actual research. So, for example, you know, if you have, um, you know, if you have research on, you know, if you've done some interviews, this is where you put your graphs, um, what people said, um, you know, you might have a quote like this, you know, that's, you know, every, uh, from a specific person that sort of highlights the, highlights the problem, um, Let's see what other research. They, so, 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 so she has limited research in this case, in Amani's um, case over here. Uh, he's got some market research. We talked about that. Um, so, he, so, so it's a basic summary of sort of, of, sort of uh, some of this research you've conducted. So most of it would be basic primary research that basically highlight that this really is a problem. Um, you know, you might show like a graph of different parts of, uh, in Amani's case, different parts of Kenya. Um, where deforestation occurred, but or something like that. Okay, the next part is, uh, which is again still part of this first section, um, and, and it would go under research as well, but I recommend that everybody does this, is an analysis of similar products, which is your market research. So if we go down in Amani, she's, he's looking at different other methods that people are currently distributing seed balls, or, or rather seeds, so planting trees. So he's got, you know, some sort of I guess uh, machine, like tractor type thing. He's got the current like slingshots method. Um, He's got uh, this, this camel method that people have tried before. Um, he, he's got like a tilling machine, which I guess is kind of a lawnmower type thing that you can pull behind. And then he's got pros and cons for each. Like what are the pros of this method and the cons of this method? In Varya's case, which is, let's look and see what she has. She has yeah, different current dispensers that are on the market, the price of them, and then again, uh, pros and cons of these different designs. It's kind of a basic market research. Um, so that's the that's the expectation for this first part um, of this of this first section. Uh, the second part is the design brief, and the design brief consists of it's it's quite simple. I've, I've kind of uh, you have your goal, um, and you're, remember you're only it's only a roughly 150 words. I generally would say it's usually a bit longer, like 150. I think is on the short side. But what what the way you get away with it, or you, the the way you sort of beat the system, is you also have quite a few visuals. So what you have here is goal what type of product you, pl you plan to build, um, and then the target audience, who, is this, you, who, who uses this product, who is your product designed for. Possible scenarios. The scenarios are like um, you know, little stories or little uh, contexts where this product could be used. And I'll show you an example you know, from both of these examples. And major design constraints is just very basic, your major specifications that you might use, your major things your product needs to contain for it to be successful. So just very simple specifications, um, like, you know, it has to, so if we look at these examples, let's look at Amani's first. Uh, we have, uh, so his, 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 he's designing here, I tend to develop a product for rural landowners, who, uh, who to, uh, rural landowners can use to throw seed bowls more efficiently and accurately covering a large area of land. So that's his basic design brief. Design goal, um, Again, is uh, you know, it's just kind of, I mean, I guess it's just a continuation of that. He, you know, he's talking about faster and more accurately over a large area. The target market in this case, or his uh, target audience, is rural landowners who have lack of vegetation. So basically, who is his market? Who is his audience? And then the product must hear his specifications. So he's actually missed out the scenario part over here. Um, I'm sure he's lost some points for that. But yeah, so I would have a scenario. Let's look at uh, Varias quickly, see what she has. Um, if we go down, she's got, uh, so let's look at that, the, get the target audience, um, is families who like to go camping or individuals host outdoor events. And so in her case, the scenarios are, for example, an outdoor camping trip, uh, trip um, 
uh, or large group activities held outside, such as sports tournaments. Your scenario can actually be a bit more expansive. You can, act, you, you know, you could have said something like a scenario is a person who likes to go uh, camping um, on weekends and has a small car, um, but the camp, but they do camping in places that are. Um, you know, where they'll need water, where there's no water on site, so they need to travel with these big dispensers. Anyway, so that might be... An, so it's basically painting a, a picture of a possible, um, you know, situation where your product would be useful. And then you have your major design constraints. And then you'll see that, in her case, she's got a, um, a Venn diagram. And then I'd also um, often suggest that you put an empathy an empathy map here. The, both of these uh, um, students haven't put both, but, I, but again, I, I suggest you do both. A Venn diagram is very simple, it's a visual way, and the way I recommend, actually here I have another slide I've, I've created where you can sort of explain the two things. So again, uh, a Venn diagram, what I recommend you do is you just, it, it's basically consists of sort of three circles, and uh, you have your user, so in Amani's case you would have rural farm owners, you, have, you would have your task, and your task is distributing seed balls, and the environment would be areas that are deforested in Kenya. And you just sh sort of show this as a diagram, and then your perfect product is where those three parts meet. In, in Varya's case, you would have, you know, families that go camping, let's say, task is dispensing water, and environment um, would be like, a, you know, would be on a campsite, let's say, or, or a place where somebody's camping. Um, there's other, also other ways to create Venn diagrams, uh, not using these three, but this is kind of the simplest method. If we look at Armani's example here, what he's done, he says location, which I guess is environment, target market is um, your users and constraints and goals are what your product has to accomplish. So similar, but not using those specific um, sort of labels. Anyway, so that's your design brief. And then empathy map is, uh, and I've created a template for you there, um, but is, is basically like an in-depth um, analysis of the user. So for example, you have your user here and, and this would be here. Um, you know, what does this user hear? So for example, let's just, let, let's just pretend the, or let's, let's take uh, um, Varya's example of, a, of, of somebody that's camping and has access to water, uh, you know, has problems uh, dispensing water. Uh, think and feel, you might say the user thinks that, uh, you know, there must be a better way to dispense water that doesn't uh, include, uh, you know, lifting it up by hand or having a bulky dispenser. What do they hear? They hear that it's, you know, it's very hard to get other, pro you know, that at the, currently there's, there's no other products like that on the market. They hear that there should be, other, you know, you should just, they should just take a smaller bottle. What are they complaining for? So what are they hearing? Seeing, what do they see? Um, you know, you could say that they, that they don't see... Um, these other products on the market, like it does, you know, they don't, um, you know, they they look in stores and they don't see them. And and what do they do? Um, is that they still carry around their bulky things? So as a result, they still have that same problem. So it's basically looking at that user, and this sort of shows that yeah, there really is a problem here. And this, and you're sort of, you know, really looking closely at the user, empathizing with them. So that's a useful thing to add to your design brief as well. Okay, quickly moving on, because I know I'm waffling on a little bit, but hopefully it'll be useful, is your design specifications. And these are, you have to include all of them. These are specified by the IB. Um, I've added one or two additional ones in here, um, and that's specifically environmental considerations, and I believe safety are the two I added in. All the other ones are, are um, the IB specified. Uh, and the way I recommend you do this is you create a table. And what you have here is you have your specification, um, so in this case, it's aesthetics. The next one would be target audience. The next one would be function. Um, here is your requirements. So this is where you're more specific. So for example, if you're saying if you're saying specification aesthetics, here you would say aesthetics. Let's just say it has to be um, you know it has to be red in color, or it has to you know it has to uh, you know blend into a certain room. So so here is you're talking about all the form you know. What are the specific specifications that your product needs to have with re in relation to aesthetics? Target audience, you would say, tar my, in, you know, in, in, in Amani's example, you would say target audience is rural farmers. Um, and we'll look at this example here in this other column. Here is where you know th this is this is probably marked the most heavily by the by the IB, and this is where you prove that you've done research. So each of these specifications has to be backed up by research. So for example, when you say, let's just say you said your product needs to be red. Here's where you'd say why red, and here you can say, for example, you know, from my research, you know, you, you would say red is a color that signifies 
uh, um, you know, danger or, and maybe that's why your product is important or you would say, you know, from my user research and interviews, I, I, I can show that most people like the color red and you might show a graph there or something like that. But basically what you're sh trying, to, trying to do is justify this specification that you put over here. And again, there's a word limit um, over here. It's 800 words, but people get away with it and, and, and show that they've done more research by adding visuals and graphs and stuff like that. So it's, it's really important that you, that, that you show these visuals and your graphs and stuff because it shows that you've done research without going into your word limit. So if we look at Amani's um, example here for seed balls, let's say, so he's gone, so here he's an aesthetic and he's saying neutral colors should be used, including a cultural elements, so some sort of cultural elements, solid, so he's got a bunch of spec specifications that have to do with aesthetics, and he's justifying that. So why neutral colors and what he means by cultural influences. Um, target audience, again, these pastoralist farmers. Um, and here, I think, I mean, what have been useful is actually to show like a map of where these people live and stuff that would have been, or even a picture of a typical farmer that would have been a uh, function. You know, he's talking about portability, uh, has to be able to hold at least two kgs of seed balls. And then, uh, you know, he's justifying that. Why two kgs? And I'm guessing, uh, and I haven't read through this, but, uh, you know, uh, so, so justifying these specifications, each one of these should be justified. And you'll see, he, if you go through this, he'll basically go through each of these specifications and make sure that it's justified on this column. Um, and you'll see that, that each of these, he sort of goes through them and Varya will have done the same thing over here. Um, so again, she's got her specification, uh, aesthetics, and then more specific, what specific thing with regards to aesthetic is over here, and then here she's justifying. She's got some target audience, she's got a, a bit of, you know, she's got some graphs that show why that target audience wants this. For function, she's got all sorts of data on, on you know, uh, easy assembly uses for all ages, she's got anthropometric data, what it means when you say useful for all ages material selection. So you'll see that basically you're justifying those specifications. Um, okay, uh, so that's, that, that is criterion A. Uh, before I end, um, I want to quickly go through the rubric over here. So again, I'm giving, uh, I'll give you this as well. So what I, what I do over here is I have, uh, you know, you've seen this already, the current situation, the current problem, a summary of research that, that informs the appropriateness of the problem, and photo evidence, brainstorming with regards to that. Um, so this is what um, you know. What's expected to be in this section at the bottom here is the uh, the mark scheme, and what I'll do when I grade when I grade it, I will just uh, highlight in red if there's certain things that I feel you're missing. Let's just say you you've explained the situation but not really explained the problem enough. What I'll do is I'll highlight this in red, like this, making you know letting you know that this is a part you can work on a bit more, and then uh, over here um, I will you know I'll let you know that you know I feel that you know. Looking at all these things and what you're missing, um, you uh, are sort of within this mark band, which is just stating a problem. You haven't really, um, I, you know, identified an appropriate problem. So then I might say, you know, if you're on the higher end, you might get a three in, in that section. And I'll go through these different um, sections. And this again is, so this one refers to criterion A. This refers to the design brief. So you're not, no, they're all referring to criterion A, but this refers to the appropriate the problem. This, this, this refers to the design brief. So for example, if you've missed the Venn diagram, you know, I'll, again, I'll highlight this in red, like letting you know, and then I might say at the bottom here, you know, please include Venn diagram, um, just so you know what to work on. Um, and then again, uh, you'll notice that each of these specifications is, is over here, and, it's, uh, and one of the main things that people often miss is the idea that you need to, you know, support, include supporting research, for each of these specifications and then also make sure to cite your sources as well okay I think that's uh, you know I've, I've, that's all I have for criterion a um, yes that's enough for me